On to a game that relates to the Bengals because one of those overtime wins I mentioned was against Minnesota last week. And I'm backing the Vikings. I know you are too. As three, three and a half point home dogs against Detroit, total of 47. I bet this at Minnesota plus three and a half minus 110 earlier in the week. You could still get a juice three and a half. And if not, I would still play this at a cheaper plus three still at the key number at home. I know Detroit may be appealing on the surface just because they put up the third most EPA per play last week against Denver. And keep in mind, though, that was a Broncos defense, as we discussed ad nauseum. That was due for a ton of negative variance with all the turnover luck they got during their even six of their last eight games were wins. So despite the loss last week, they've still been red hot overall and a lot of turnover luck that played into their win streak or at least their stretch winning six of eight. Minnesota can stop this Lions run game that was able to exploit the Broncos on the ground. Vikings have a top 10 run defense in EPA per carry allowed. They also rank much higher in terms of being able to limit opposing play action attacks. And that's where Goff was able to also take advantage of the Broncos defense last week. And then there's the most important factor for for the Vikings defensively with Brian Flores going up against Jared Goff. Digging into this, man, I I cannot believe some of the numbers. A, Goff struggles a ton against pressure and zone coverage, which we harped on a bunch going back to the two Bears games in recent weeks for Detroit. The Vikings blitz at the league's highest clip, and it's like nearly six percentage points higher than the next highest team, the Giants, I think, with Wink Martindale right behind Minnesota. And they also use cover zero and cover two at 27 times the league average and if you just look at this season specifically I'm on Ross St. Brown against cover zero and cover two looks 0.86 yards per route run this season so it's not just golf historically struggling against that coverage it even shows up with one of the more explosive receivers in the NFL against it this year and Then you go and look back at Goff against Brian Flores in his two previous matchups against the Vikings defensive coordinator. In 2020, four turnovers and an 8.5 quarterback rating against that Dolphins defense that Flores manned. And then in Super Bowl 53, when it was Rams and Patriots and Flores was the New England linebacker coach, I think calling plays for the Pats defense that year, struggled in that Super Bowl too. No touchdowns, one pick, and pretty low quarterback rating at that. And then for Minnesota offensively, you mentioned this in our Discord earlier in the week, Vikings outgained Cincinnati in yards per play, A. Nick Mullins also, besides the two turnovers, which I know are pretty rough to watch, 0.18 EPA per play, pretty damn good, plus 17.1 completion percentage over expected, also pretty good, 664 Uh, pro football focus grade and a 99.9 passer rating. Obviously, Justin Jefferson back in the lineup helps really explosive playmakers for Minnesota outside of Jefferson and Addison and Hawkinson. And on top of that, the Lions allowing the seventh best passing success rate in the NFL. So I love the spot here for Minnesota fighting for their playoff lives, even though Detroit can clinch the NFC North with a win, the NFC title, North title with a win. I really like Minnesota catching a key number of a field goal at home. And I know you're on this one too, Mo. Yeah, not quite as excited as you, I think. Um, You could convince me that a flat three is like a pretty fair line, but I just couldn't resist the three and a half. Uh, At still one available at BetMGM, I believe. And uh it wouldn't really surprise me though if you were right and this should be honestly closer to a pick like minus one or something um just because of a jared Goff's matchup i mean you said a lot of the, basically everything that's in my notes is stuff you already said so I, I don't have a whole lot to add but uh the i will say you know the vikings seventh most zone coverage this year and we've talked about that a lot with jared Goff and and I, I think this is crazy. I mean, I don't always put a lot of stock into PFF grades, but when it matches kind of like what we're seeing and and what the numbers are saying, I, I think it can matter. And and you see, 
Jared Goff's numbers against the Blitz this year is crazy. I mean, he's 61 grade against the Blitz, 90 when he's not blitzed. So uh, that just tells the tale. And I, I think we've known that for years with Jared Goff. Right? I mean, the guy has a tremendous arm. And if he sees a guy downfield and he doesn't have anybody in the way, because we know that he has a tendency to not see linebackers at times. So if there's a clear throwing lane and he can just zip the ball, I mean, this guy can, can rip it uh, downfield, you know, 20, 30 yards on a rope about as good as anybody. But, you know, when he has to make tough reads, when he has to uh, throw off his back foot, stuff like that is when he does tend to struggle. And, Another thing that you didn't mention is uh, Ty Chandler. I think that he's actually providing some real juice to this running game. Uh, I know the Lions can be good against the run, but uh, I've talked at, at times. Alexander Madison is terrible. He's just a plunger. He just Hopefully he doesn't play this week. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like he's probably going to so. go, but I, it sounds like Ty Chandler has uh, impressed the coaching staff enough to where they're just making him the starter. I mean, that's pretty much what I read, I believe, earlier this week on Twitter. It sounds like Ty Chandler will be the top back regardless, and even if Madison goes, he's going to be more of um, the uh, change of pace, spell the, the top guy uh running back here so madison is is not good so anytime somebody else who has shown a little bit of punch is getting some carries i i think that might help the vikings a tad and yeah i I just think flores plus a home field that you know while it is inside it is a loud uh disruptive crowd that can provide some help to the defense and potentially make life a little bit more difficult on Jared Goff. We know that he thrives indoors at home. So I think with Brian Flores in this home field, uh, I think they can do enough on defense to to keep this one close. So uh, I'm with you here all the way. I I was very surprised. We saw Steven play the Lions early in the week, and we saw the market be with him, um, and it pops up to three and a half. I was definitely surprised. Uh, how much the market liked the Lions in this spot, but it seems to be coming back down a little bit. Maybe the Sharps are just in on Vikes at three and a half, and that's the only number they want. And you mentioned some of, maybe not just in general, with some of the Vikings defensive nuggets, but Daniil Hunter, Harrison Phillips, and Byron Murphy all missed the walkthrough of Wednesday's practice. So it's not really an official practice. So just a few very key names to keep an eye on for Minnesota. Jordan Hicks, though, is back for Minnesota. He practiced or quote-unquote practiced in full on Wednesday, which is huge after suffering what seemed to be a gruesome leg injury against the Saints going back to three to four weeks ago. So Minnesota getting the reinforcement back, but also very, very significant names to monitor. Hunter second in the NFL in sacks. So yeah, very I would just throw out, it was an illness for him, not an injury. So that early in the week wouldn't be too concerned in most cases. Right. I'm with you there. 